don't forget to subscribe for more reviews. Please also like. Thank you. Hello there everyone, Tom here again, and today we will be taking a look at the Whalen brand uh, Layton Fireplace TV Stand. This is the one that has the espresso finish, and uh, you, it currently is uh, purchasable at Walmart. I think I paid $250 uh, and then tax on top of that. Uh, so I thought we would take a look at it and see what we get. This is a fireplace TV stand. Uh, its dimensions are 54 inches wide by 15.75 dimensions deep and 35 and a half inches high. It fits a 65 inch flat TV panel. So I'm going to uh, open this thing up, show you all what's in it, and before I do that, I'll get a close-up here of the box so you can see what's going on with it. So here are some of the things that you can do with this. Um, it's got the open shelf, 23-inch uh, wide insert, heats 400 square feet, uh, whatever quantum flame technology is, all that good stuff. Uh, moving up the box, we see it looks like this. See the picture of the box. All right, I think that's about enough of the box. So it looks like I'm gonna end up having to take it apart from this section right here. So I will go ahead and do this. It's just glued together, so that's a good thing. Okay, I'll tell you what, this box is not going to be used for anything anyway, so close up my thing here, and we've got a couple of different things. I'll pull everything out of the box and we'll take a look at it. So right off the bat, you get three boxes of things. Uh, this box represents the fireplace insert. This is the primary wood and hardware. And I'm not sure what's in this one just yet. Uh, I haven't opened it up to see. But it's more hardware, things of that nature. All right, so I'll get the pieces out, lay them out so we can assemble. So I've laid everything out, and what you're looking at right now is the, um, the fireplace itself. We'll take a closer in-depth look at that. Uh, we get several different pieces here all laid out. There's a bunch of them, uh, including those doors right there. The piece right here is actually the top of the mantle, and I imagine these are the two shelf pieces. Additional shelving. Um, that's the dog back there. I apologize. She doesn't come with it. Um, yeah, so what I will do is I will start assemblage. I'll move the fireplace here out of the way and I will, I think, begin construction from this vantage point. So effectively, there are three tools here that you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have a long flat screwdriver or at least something that's that's decent enough, flat enough to get into this piece right here which you can see is actually a four-way or some people refer to them as Phillips head screw. I've discovered that this type of flat does actually better for me to each his own. You'll also need a Phillips head or a four-way screwdriver. This one is small, but it fits everything that they have in the kit. You'll also need a hammer of some kind. Me personally, I prefer a rubber mallet, but you can do whatever you want. Just don't kill the stuff with it. And I like to use wood glue. 
This is a particular brand. I don't know if I'm supposed to show it on camera or not. So uh, I like this particular brand. It's made in USA. So I will be putting that in with the dowels, which are right here, just to make sure this is more solid than it, it might otherwise be. So I'm going to start the assembly. So, you may have noticed that I put a drop of wood glue in these before I uh, secured them. I did this because this is press board, if I haven't mentioned it before. And press board has a tendency occasionally to pull these things out. Uh, the drop of glue merely helps secure it to the press board. It's not necessary, it's not something you have to do but it is something that I recommend doing. I've put together a lot of shelves made out of this type of material and that little drop of glue just helps secure it in a way that it wouldn't be secured otherwise. So it's up to you. You can do it or not. It's not a requirement. It, I will say it did come with a little vial of wood glue, but I have my own preferences. I'm sure other people do as well. So we, we basically put these screws in piece A, B, and C, and this is piece B, so I'm going to go ahead at this point and I'm going to do, I think, uh, piece C, and then I'll move on to the mantle, which is actually piece A. So, I actually ran into a little bit of an issue with this one, and what happened, whoa, sorry, what happened was it was going in crooked, and if I can zoom in there, I damaged the wood just a little bit. So what that, what that uh, glue will do is it will help ensure the fact that it stays where it's supposed to go. If you've noticed, I usually start by holding it and then screwing it in, it just helps keep it uh, level and straight because if you, if you get it off at all, you may end up with what I had right over here. So that was C, we'll go on to A. Okay, so that represents everything that is discussed in the first section. We are now moving on to the second section where I will assemble pieces, uh, do the same thing basically, with pieces G, N, and I. Alright, so I've got the pieces for, uh, this is G, this is I, and this is N, and we have two N's. And this is apparently a cover for the um, drawer, maybe. This one doesn't look so good. It's got a blemish right here. Uh, the wood didn't take, the, the polish didn't take right through here. This one looks kind of rough. Um, I don't know how well that's coming off on camera, but yeah, regardless, this one has its blemishes as well. We'll figure it out, but first, first things first, I've got to get the uh, pieces in it. 
Hmm. Okay. First things first. For this next step, the instructions show that we use part M, N and part M. We're going to use dowel rods and we're going to use some of the cams here. So effectively what we're going to do, it says we need three dowel rods, but I'm not sure, oh because no, I don't see where we would need three, but uh, this is the dowel rod. This is going to go into this hole here. Okay, oh, you all didn't see that, did you? This is gonna go into this hole right here. And you can see it's already pre-cut and it goes in just fine. And it's going to go into this hole right here. Again, very loose, just fits right in. This piece here is going to come in here like this. We will take the cams here. They will come in. And the way these things are made is you get this coming in like this, and then it circles around and it grips hold of it. So it's actually a really unique way of um, doing this type of thing. You just have to make sure you get these things orientated properly. Is that a word, orientated? Doesn't really matter. Uh, so I will go ahead and I'm going to glue these up. And I'll probably glue these as well. Uh, they'll just be that much more secure. And I'll probably put a bead right through here as well. So, yeah, let's get started. So I've got those two pieces done. Now I'm going to move on to assembly of pieces G and K and I. So and L apparently. So we'll we'll work on those next. Okay, so I've got piece G and I right here. This is piece K. Uh, piece K comes in and sets right like this right here. Okay, uh, I'll use two of these camshaft things right here and right here and two dowel rods that'll go in right here and right here which will correspond with those two holes right there. Now, I believe that this is part L there is no sticker on it. I can only conclude that maybe it fell off in the package, but it is exactly the same as part K. And it looks like part L serves the same purpose as part K does here, if you all can make that out. So I am going to progress as if it is um, part L. And I think that'll be just fine. Be mindful, if I haven't mentioned it already, when I'm adding this glue, you might have a little overage, so you want to be sure you don't use too much. There's a, there's a fine line there that you have to hit, and I can't tell you where that line is. Just if you follow my example, be sure of the fact that you don't over glue, because you will regret that. All right, so let's get into this.
so I've gone ahead and uh, I've glued it down. The pieces are stable, and that concludes that section. So I guess the next thing we're going to do here is look at parts G, J, and I. So it looks like we're going to assemble that next. Uh, before I pop off here, I just want to make sure everybody understands I'm not in any way associated with this company and I'm not getting paid for it. So this is a completely uh, non-biased review. I'm just going to put it together. We're going to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead, pause here, and jump into the next section. So for this section, we're going to effective... Whoops. We're going to need two cams and two dowels. And what we're going to do here is the dowel, this piece, J, connects part I and part G together. And this part, it's going to go like this. This is going to take the cam and it's going to set in right here. The dowel will come in right there and it's just going to bolt together like this, both pieces. So, I will begin that process and hopefully not destroy anything in the process itself. two pieces together. I will now set them aside and we will work on the next step which requires part D, part C, part E, and part C and part D. So maybe there's more than one part D. I'll take a look at it. We'll figure it out. Okay so for this step the instructions say that we need 10 cams and four dowels. I've also, I've taken a look at the different pieces here. This is just a black piece, and this piece is D, and it is part of the mantle, uh, part of the front finish. I've also taken the liberty to look at these pieces uh, as far as them lining up together, and from what I can tell, based on on C here, uh, this flat piece, there does not appear to be a difference regarding uh, the bolt patterns or the holes for the dowel rods. They appear to be the same. So what I'm getting at here is it shouldn't matter if you put E on that side and D on this side or E on this side and D on that side. It shouldn't matter. Uh, it may it may just destroy the whole thing if I do it wrong. I I don't know, but I'm going to go with it in this manner, and if it doesn't work, then don't follow my example. <laughs> if it does work, follow it. All right, so why don't we get started with this? Let's see what comes next, shall we? Alright, so it looks like we take that piece that we made with uh, L and all that other stuff and we attach it here 
to the piece that we just then did. And it looks like we're going to use four dowel rods and four of those good long sized wood screws. Hmm. I bet that is the that thing that we made is the frame for the uh, box, the firebox. So yeah, this thing apparently sets up like this. Let me flip this thing around here so that we can do this proper. And apparently this thing comes in, I imagine it comes in like this and sets right here like this. And then it'll all screw together. I bet you that's how that works. Let me just check to make sure. All right, so I was correct and I've gone ahead and turned this upright so I can put my glue down and the dowel rods in. This requires, this particular phase requires four dowel rods and four of those big long screws. So uh, there are pre-drilled holes in this. Uh, you can't see them, but I can. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, put my little drop of glue down put my dowel rods on and we'll go from there. assembled that we've done that next we're going to do this with parts F and H looks like they're just going to go on the sides and looks like I need to set it back over on its side again well crap all right we'll, we'll take care of it okay so this is panel H this is panel F and what we do here is we're effectively making the sides and the places where the glass doors will go on. For this, we need six dowel rods and six cams. What we're going to effectively do here, uh, the cams, they fit up underneath, you can't see, they fit up underneath here. They go up under. And they go in at three different places. And then your dowel rods come in and they're going to fit in, uh, where do they fit in at? Say here, and here. It would appear that I also need to add a few of those um, things, the, the lockers. But I don't remember it ever saying that in the directions. So either I missed it, which I grant is a full possibility, or it just never told us to do that. Should be one here, one here, and one here. Um, here, here, and here, if I'm looking at this correctly in the way that the pattern would be on the, on the thing. Here, here. Huh, interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll look at it and figure it out and take care of it. Okay, so I did flub it. Uh, there's not been a single one of these projects that I can remember that I've done where I haven't made some small error. So <sighs> the dowel rods are going to go here, here, and here on both sides. And the uh, lock pins are going to go up on the inside. So I will start working on that next. So 
Sorry for the cut there, folks. Uh, I was able to get this piece on. Um, I decided to pause in what I was doing right here and not show the result of this because uh, I figured nobody wanted to hear me, let's say, wax poetically uh, over it. It was not fun. Uh, no, it was, it was not fun. But I have been able to get it so I'm going to work on this side next. Okay, so now I've got that put together. Uh, looks like the next step is going to be little corner pieces that are just going to go right here and on this corner right here. I guess they're for stabilizing. Okay, that's fine. I'll I'll put those in next, and I tell you what, I'll go ahead and use the floor levelers as well while I'm at it, just to just to get those two out of the way. Installed those. Next step, let's see here. It looks like, according to the directions, it's time to turn it up on its side, uh, on its end. So I will go ahead and do that, and we're going to take. There's a bracket that's going to go on the top here that's going to help secure it. So. I'll go ahead and do that. We're preparing to put on the mantle, so that's coming next. All right, so we're looking at the inside where the fireplace will set right here. The next step is to take these two uh, connectors, and there are two little holes right here, and they're over here on this side too. Uh, this just strengthens. What we're doing right now is, is simply strengthening the unit to ensure the fact that it works properly. And the easiest thing to do is just line that up, put it in, just like this. Don't tighten it down all the way, otherwise you will have issues. And we don't want issues. I will say it is more difficult than you would imagine to get these things started but since we are going to be putting since we're going to be putting the fireplace in here we definitely want can we call this the firebox we definitely want the firebox to be as solid and secure as we can make it so we take the time effort and energy to ensure the fact that it does exactly what it is supposed to do and that it is secured as securely as we can possibly make it. Yep. Just like this. Okay, so I will go ahead and I'll put on the other one and when I come back, we'll put on the top. So in an effort to be uh, slightly more efficient with this, I've gone ahead, this is B, and I've put in the dowel rods. I've also, on the other side, gone ahead and put in the lock pins. So those are done. All I have to do now is add the glue. Yeah, there were lock pins here, 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 lots of different places. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a bead of glue down, and then I will go ahead and assemble the other thing. It 
it can be challenging to align all of these things accurately. So, I will do my level best to try and get it where it needs to go on the first try. Uh, it almost never works, but you know, there's got to be a, a first try for it. Try to get everything to line up properly. And then when you do, it's kind of one of those situations where you get one lined up and none of the rest of them go. I'll fight with this and get it in here. And I'll I'll try and finish this up off camera. Alright, so I got the top on and I'm I'm trying to do a few things here in an effort to save some time. Because I don't want this video to be three hours. So the next thing I need to do is I need to put six of those cam screws in and they're gonna go here, here, and here. And after that we will install uh, pieces M, O, and M again with some dowel rods and some locks. So we'll pick it up here in just a second. Got this thing assembled. I've gone ahead and I added the cams here to these sections that I know we're going to need them all except for this one right here which I'll go ahead and add and then we'll put the top on and we'll add the dowel rods where they need as well. from the back now and the next step is to put uh, the back panels on this is S S and R and they're gonna go right here right here and right here so rather than taking up a lot of time just showing that we use the screws here I'm just gonna go ahead and do it so the next thing we need to do is install the handles for the door the two doors so I'm going to go ahead and use this as a tabletop and lay down um, this thing right here. This is going to come on like this. This will come behind it and it will take two screws. So wherever I've set my screwdriver, right here, I'll go ahead and get this thing started. All 
All right, so the next step is to take the doors around to the front and assemble them. All right, so to get the doors on, you loosen this hinge, uh, this bolt right here, and there's a bolt right here and right here that you loosen. But then what you do is you line it up and it just kind of slides into place. It does, I promise. Once it's done right, as with everything, human error plays a factor. Get it in there. Okay. Then just tighten it down. Tight, this one's not. There we go. Now that's where it's supposed to be. Alright. Just secure it into place. So the next thing we need to do is put our shelf in, and we've just got our standard little shelf brackets here. I just go in the holes. The tricky part is making sure that you get them all in the correct holes here so that they're not crooked as a shelf. And this shelf has an edge to it. This is part number Q. And you just stick it in here. And now you got a shelf. It's just that simple. I'll do that on the other side. Additionally, we have these little pieces right here, which are supposed to be lock covers for the little turners. So you could just put those wherever you've got one of the turners, and you're all good. And trust me, you've got a, a ton of these. So the next step is to use these little rubber thingies and to put them on your door here so that they will not bump. Okay, so to install the fireplace insert we have to get the bag with the other directions out and it's got the remote control and a little baggie of screws that are going to be used to assemble um, basically the skirting to this. What All I have to do is I've got a piece that goes on the side and a piece that goes on the top and then we can finish inserting this piece into the fire, uh, into the mantle. So I'll go ahead and assemble this. take this thing and we push it into place and finish the assembly. So one of the things I have discovered is there are holes we were supposed to insert screws but there are no holes in the wood so I'm gonna have to put those in there. Uh, just be mindful. So according to the directions, the final thing that we have to do is install this little piece here, and this is just to help prevent stuff from falling off the TV. I'm going to go ahead and remove this sticker as well, uh, just to have it done. Okay folks, I have worked on this. I've gotten it to the point where it's all set up. Uh, be mindful of the fact that I have a PlayStation 4 and it sits flush with the cords. It has 
three different heating uh, lights but the heater is the same uh, speed and the same temperature no matter what it does not have a temperature gauge on it so uh, just be mindful of that this is not something that you're going to be able to turn on and it will turn off itself it, it doesn't like I said it doesn't have a regulator it doesn't have a thermostat so I like it um, you know it's two hundred fifty dollars versus the six hundred dollar one at Lowe's so should you buy it sure I, I think it's worth its money thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next review thank you for watching my papa's channel please subscribe and like thank you